We're kicking things off with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game. Quite a few updates here since the last time we talked about it. First of all, a brand new behind the scenes video was just released through Gun Interactive's YouTube channel, and it's just called the Capturing the Sound of Horror. It's only about three and a half minutes, and it features uh, sound effects recording artist Watson Wu, as well as Lord Chaos, the YouTuber Lord Chaos, who is their uh, Foley effects artist and helps them out with recording sound effects, running the chainsaws and whatnot. And now this video really is just meant to show how that Foley process is going about, and the amount of time and effort they put in to truly and accurately capture the sound of the original chainsaw and even like the Texas sounds like the sound of Texas. Yeah. I mean, they went even as far as like getting like the sound the chainsaw makes when it, it moves. They had uh they had Lord chaos, like walking, yeah, like walking out softly would... yeah. as he can. So we can really just hear the sounds of the, the chainsaw, uh, clinking and clangering clamoring yeah i mean th- that and even like the way he was running the way lord mm-hmm. chaos was running was kind of trying to like mimic what kane would be doing mm-hmm. that way it is accurate to the footsteps of right. Leatherface in the game so yeah it's just the the little things that are are really impressive here uh, recording sound is recording sound of course they they went out of the way to to get really accurate sound and that's what anybody would do in this scenario uh but what made this really cool is one for those that don't understand foley like foley is one of my favorite things in in video games and movies it's such a unique practice and mm-hmm. making those sounds but having i don't know uh, watson Wu had what like 10 microphones set up something like that and they're um, mid to side microphones so there's capturing full stereo so that when you're in game you're truly experiencing audio all around you and it's accurate and it feels real and it's it's going to lead to a more immersive experience. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's why this process they're going through is even more special. But uh, the big thing is, man, that, that chainsaw and the amount of effort that they put in to make sure it was accurate, anyone could just go to Walmart and buy a chainsaw. And I think most of us would be happy with that, right? They could be like, yeah, it, it's a chainsaw sounds like right. a chainsaw, right? But, uh, you know, over time, those saws have, have upgraded, especially at Poulon, who's been around for ever who had made the original model uh 306a that is used in the texas chainsaw massacre yeah you know, that sound is different it, the way a rev sounds different than a modern chainsaw today so that's why they went out of their way to get those saws and uh, Wes keltner ceo of gun interactive said on twitter we spent months sourcing parts to rebuild the same make model year chainsaw which again like i said was a, a poulon model 306a which discontinued in 1980 by the way so getting one's not easy. Yeah, no, especially yeah, one that that works, and yeah, you'd have to search all over to get uh get those parts. Yeah, and he was uh, Wes was also asked about that on Twitter. Is you know, how hard was it to actually track one of those down? And he said very hard. We located three source parts, rebuilt, took around six months in total to pull that off. And you could find them on eBay, you know, but they're a few hundred bucks. Right, and yeah. And that's that's assuming that they work. That any part of it works. Yeah, that's a whole other process, yeah. right? Like most of them that you're gonna find on eBay are usually for parts, things like that. So finding one that works and or just you know, buying one that doesn't work and then fixing it. Right. And I'm sure they did that a couple times too. That's quite the, the process and that's dedication. So I can't say it's going to be any more accurate than it it is in the game. Right. That's for sure. So that's that video. That's behind the scene video. I'm sure we're going to see more of those in the future. Um, you know, we've gotten the mocap, we've gotten the sound now. Probably Sumo Nottingham next, maybe inside of the actual development studio and, we'll, cool. and watching them work on models and something like that. I don't know. Um, but also, they have been going on Twitter lately and sharing new images here and there. They said it would be. Just in the coming weeks, they'll be dropping images and giving some gameplay details. And the first image we got was in the South Cell basement. And they said on Twitter, at the beginning of a match, victims are strung up like cattle after they've been captured by the family. Now, we already knew that. We knew that the, you were going to start in the basement for the game and you'd have to escape somehow being right. strung up. But it was now we know, just based on the image, that you actually play a little bit of a mini game and that sound meter that we've talked about in the past is on there as well. So instantly you are, you know, you, you gotta be careful yeah. on, on the sound that you're making. And I do wonder seeing that how, how important is sound in the early game? You making sound, how important is that? Right. We you know we, uh, that Leatherface starts out in the basement with you. Right. And in theory, like Leatherface should know where you are 
I mean, he put you down there, right? Uh, right. But maybe as a player, you don't just for you know, making things fair. Right. And and yeah, the other family members that are outside of the basement at that time, uh, you know, yeah, you make a lot of noise. They'll know, oh, someone got out. Right, right. So I, I think the way these, these meters work hasn't really been confirmed specifically how it you know the system works but i think if you were to try to wreck rapid fire x here it would be if you go too fast that's when you make noise you kind of have to pick and choose how quickly you want to do things and right. that goes for pretty much any time a mini game like this comes up right i mean if you're being chased by one maybe two family members they know where you are it's probably worth it to make the noise to get out because they already know where you are if right you're, if you're stuck in a trap somewhere or think you're alone yeah being a little sneaky is uh is definitely going to help there yeah, so you know, when you're solo and you're still trying to hide, then the you know that mini game is a little bit more important. But I imagine, I don't know about the beginning of the game. I don't know about this scenario specifically, but if you're in the chase, I, yeah, you can just kind of go crazy with yeah. it. I'm uh, still wondering what the symbols at the bottom mean. They seem to be steps leading to an exit, but I, it, you know, I don't know. It's gonna be up in the air. Still don't know what the heartbeat itself does. Yeah, the heart there. That that symbol has changed. Yes, I was gonna say that it is different, little different UI. Uh... Uh, since the preview is that what they called it? Yeah, it's the gameplay preview that yeah. that we saw. Uh, okay, the next image is uh, a survivor, a victim looting, and again that that mechanics comes into play there that we see. And they said with Leatherface lurking nearby, victims will need to scavenge for items just to escape the basement. And it, they made it clear as well. Andy has been kind of around on, on Discord and Reddit that the only the only goal of the victims is just to escape the property, yeah. right? There isn't a side quest, right? <laughs> like uh, kind of similar to F thirteen. There's not really a side quest. All right, you you're escaping the property. And that's it. You can't kill the family. You can't go right. grab a sweater. All right, so <laughs> it, it's escape the property. But there are four ways to do so, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But yeah, we're uh, we're in the cold room here, scavenging for parts. Uh, you see that he actually found a screwdriver here, and look at the heart. Look at the heart again. Like the heart is halfway down. It's a little bit orange now. Cholesterol, man. You gotta watch <laughs> it. <him. laughs> that, that must be. That must be what it is. Yeah. Still, I, I'm still not uh, particularly sure how that that heart will work. But so I'm excited to see where that comes into play because yeah. obviously it's not stamina. We see a stamina bar. So how does the heart uh, differentiate? And maybe that comes into the sound we're seeing as as he's making more and more sound. Uh, Sunny here, maybe that's increasing his fear. Right. As your fear gets higher, you you know your chances of stumbling, like an F thirteen, your chances of stumbling go up, or your stamina or, depletes uh, quickly. Yeah, more quickly. Or or even maybe you make noise faster. Maybe that bar right. fills faster if your heart is worse, which makes sense. I mean, hey, you're scared. Uh, you're a little jittery. You might drop a might drop like a screwdriver or something. Yeah. Makes it make a little bit more noise. Um, but we'll talk about some more of the parts as well. But uh, first, let's go on to the next image, uh, which for this one, we get to see the old hitchhiker doing some work here. And it's him uh, setting up the battery. They said the minute a match starts, each family member has a job to do to fortify the property. Like the hitchhiker here supplying some 12 volt juice to one of the cattle grid exits. Uh, again, we already kind of knew this. We knew that they'd have to, at the beginning of the game, have a mission to do because one it stops you from tunneling the victims right away right because uh then another emphasis that andy made on discord is that yeah this isn't your typical basement across all the maps these basements are huge right so they you know the family can't just tunnel you out right away and kill you from the get-go if they were to make that choice and not secure the property like we see here with the hitchhiker then you're probably going to be able to escape very easily right so it's crucial that you can go and, and set this property up and using a 12 volt battery out of the car here. Um, anyone in the family is able to do this and juice up the battery and and get these these fence lines secure. Also, if you do step into an electric fence as a victim, it will hurt you. So something to be smart about. True. Yeah, but your job as a victim, disarm these. You, know, you got to disarm those traps first before making an escape. So disarm the electrified fence and then you also still have to unlock the, the doors themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's just mini games. At the end of the day, something similar to this. What the difficult part of these mini games, these these moments, at least for the victims, is you only have so much time, right? You got people on your tails. You're making noise. If you get spotted, you only have so much time to uh, get safe right. and, and manage that escape. So, 
Uh, okay, and then uh, I also have a, a few quotes here that come from Andy Cleves over on Reddit. And I think some of them are really interesting because they kind of give us some more details. And uh, one in particular I, I really want to discuss. So uh, first of all, he said there's four different ways to escape. There is an objective to complete to activate each individual exit. We'll be sharing more news on these objectives soon. So we already know, you, you know, you're going to have to, you know, to, uh, if you want to go out the back gate at like the slaughter house, the slaughter family house, you're going to have to disarm the electric fence and then open that back gate and unlock it through the pick locks and whatnot. We know that, but as for the other exits, not so yeah. sure. There seems to be one in the basement that involves like powering that exit gate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. As for the other two, I, I don't know. Who, who knows how difficult uh, they will be. And the part that's, that's interesting to me is the next quote here. The question was, can all victims escape through a single exit? And Andy said, some exits definitely, but some would be hard to do so. But with teamwork and efficiency, I suppose so. What do you mean, I suppose so? Hmm. So yes, all exits have the potential to have all victims escape through them. With teamwork and efficiency, it would be easier to do that, he well, supposes. Yeah, so the one in the basement seems to be the one that if you walk through it, you walk through it, everybody gets out. You just got to get down the tunnel. Uh, so that makes sense that that would be something a little bit more simplistic to do to get everybody all out at once. Right. But why would it be so difficult in uh, like the back gate, the slaughter family and whatnot? Um, I, I'm just curious how these, ex these exits differentiate from each other and how one would be easy to do so to get everybody out, but one wouldn't be. But you still could if you needed to or wanted to. Right. Yeah, like is the if the family's on you. I mean, it's not gonna be like Friday the Thirteenth where you know you have seven people beating up Jason in one area. <laughs> right. In theory, you you would assume that all uh, all your victims would be spread out at least a little bit. Maybe you get one with you. Um. So yeah, how how easy is it for all four to rush one exit at the same time and all escape? Right. I think where uh, certain exits. Uh, will be more difficult to get people out is that the objective to do to open those exits separate the victims so this is still kind of we're you know playing a guessing game here we haven't actually seen it confirmed but that exit that's in the basement of the slaughterhouse seems to be powered by multiple generators or like fuse boxes yeah so it seems like one victim will have to be somewhere else in the house to turn on the to power that gate and somebody else has to open it and you know, obviously the family would be alerted when that gate is powered. So then it's, you know, come shut the fuse box off before you even get back over there. Right. So I can see how it would be difficult. If you were, if you were solo doing an exit like that, you could just kind of camp the fuse box as a family member, right? Like, yeah, it, it wouldn't be very easy to, to pull that off. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm curious. I, and I, it, there are four different escapes, but will the objectives be unique to each one? That's kind of what he says here. We should, you know, uh, there's an objective to complete to activate each individual exit, but are the objectives the same? Is kind of like my question there. Right. Uh, okay, so he had another quote here. It said, Tools, bone scraps, and health items are things victims can find across all of the maps. A tool can be used to unlock doors, the fuse box, etc. Bone scraps can be used to stun a family member, amongst other things that we'll get to a bit later. And a health item is pretty self-explanatory. It can be used for victims to heal themselves or their teammates. Uh, kind of knew this. Kind of knew this already. We've uh, kind of seen it in action in the gameplay previews. Um, just, you know, I just want to reiterate that one fighting back is extremely limited you know bone scraps are as far as that really goes the you know a tool being used to unlock doors the fuse box etc and of course the health items self-explanatory like i said mm -hmm. and yeah and how uh how uh what's the word i'm looking for common i guess are each of these these things i would assume pretty common i mean even in like the gameplay we saw there was quite a few toolboxes yeah, and then it seemed like, at least in the gameplay preview, maybe this will change, but it looked like you knew what item you were going to find before you actually went to the toolbox. Right. It would say, find a bone shard, and then you kind of scavenge through the toolbox. You would know ahead of time. I understand that. I could, you know, if your time is definitely going to be really important in this and being sneaky, so you kind of want to pick and choose where you scavenge. But I think that would be interesting if you just didn't know. 
didn't know what item you were going for. Right. Yeah, you, you you need a screwdriver, need a screwdriver, walk up to 10 toolboxes in a row and you don't have a screwdriver. Yeah, it's it's kind of like opening a drawer at F13. You never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, could be a little annoying. I don't know. Especially because you only it's only three items. Right. Right. Hey, we don't, we don't have a, a walkie-talkie and a pocket knife and a Metzger and tapes. Then keys and Tommy tapes and Pamela tapes. Yeah, so three options. I understand you just want to like pick and choose which one you go for. Right. Uh, okay. He also said uh, when it came to the average length of a game, he said the game is still in active development, so all things are subject to change. But as it stands right now, the average match lasts around 15 minutes. I think that's perfect, honestly. Yeah, it seems a little short. I mean, uh, you know, F13 at max was 20. 20. Right, so if on average, I, this isn't confirmed anywhere here, but is, is there a clock at all? Or can this can the game run as long as you want, like Dead by Daylight, right. until the exit gates are open? Can you just kind of go on forever? Right. Or? And, we, and, you know, we have to take into account that these are people that help make the game. So their experience playing and how they play yeah. is going to be different than the the common man or yeah. woman. I wonder what the shortest game for them has looked like. Right. I mean, can it can it really end in less than five minutes if you just kill everybody just like that, that quick? You know? Maybe. I don't know, that, that'll be interesting. But I think 15 minutes is about right. Uh, I think a lot of these games struggle with it going too long. You know, I, I, Evil Dead, for example, is, is long. Or it can be. Mm-hmm. You know, you're hitting that 30-minute plus mark. So when you're trying to grind for certain you know xp or certain trophies and whatnot and you have to play a 30 minute game at a time you play two games and your whole evening is gone <laughs> yeah. right so you don't i think 15 minutes is pretty good um and then last but not least here uh, in terms of cosmetics that can be put on the victims and he did say expect any and all cosmetics to fit the time period and most importantly fit the tone of the 1974 film the text chainsaw massacre I don't think we're getting Le Chop of the Giant. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get that, uh, the PJ, the PJ, yeah, the pajama clothing pack. Thank you. That yeah. For me, that is, that's great news. I, I'm all for cosmetics. I, the more, the merrier for the most part. Yeah. I don't, this game should be as, as serious and scary as it possibly can be because that's what the IP is, at least the first film. So, yeah, like, please stick with the very right. serious cosmetics. But you still do cool things, man. Yeah. The 70s were quite a time. Swimsuits is probably, like, borderline. Like, you could get away with the old-timey swimsuits. Well, yeah, if you even look at back, like, the original film and, and wearing right. short shorts and a swim top or, you know, a, a revealing top, things like that. Yeah, I think there's that's room. That's about it. It's, no, summer, it's summer in Texas. Yeah. No just... Halloween costumes, no p- pajamas. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't do, like, full-on swimsuits either. Right, no. Like, uh, I don't want Speedo Chad, and, and we don't need Tiffany, you know, being super sexualized. Right. Like, right. Like, this should be scary. This game has potential to be the scariest asymmetrical uh, multiplayer game that we've gotten, so I really just stick with that tone. Yeah. Make it scary. But, yeah, like I said, the 70s or anything before it, like 60s and 70s, there's plenty of fun cosmetics you could do yeah i mean the the difference in fashion between the 60s and the early 70s and the late 70s even. yeah yeah there, there's a lot to work with but this does also confirm that they at least at first are not looking to move too far out of the 70s yeah like texting some massacre 2 came out uh, 14 years after 12 years after the original so i think so fun, yeah so you know if the a TCM2 DLC comes out, does that also change the cosmetics that are available for the, the victims? Uh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But, uh, we, we, we're we waiting for the game right now. Yeah, Who cares about first. what clothes are wearing? Yeah, we still don't even know how what the technical test is coming. Right. right? And I think that's why, if, if there's an estimation on a release date here, I think you're still looking at definitely quarter two at the earliest, probably quarter three if I was if I was betting just because you know we haven't even had a technical test yet there's not even pre-orders yet the game ain't coming out in March all right or April it's still got some time here so you know stay patient that's why what we're seeing right now these images they're limited right Right. they're just a little little teases it's just kind of to pass the time to keep us going to the next update 
so they still have quite the marketing schedule here to go yeah and it'd be it'd be nice to see uh see the game come out in like may and then kind of run the summer yeah um yeah I, it could also benefit from it from an august september october release as well yeah i think august is a really sweet spot for them you have tcm day so that's great you can have fun with that and you know it's still summer enough and you're still beating all of the christmas games that are going to happen those huge yes. budget games so yeah if they could pull off august or earlier that would be ideal i think for a game like this um, but we'll see what happens it's just a waiting game at this point yeah hopefully we just hear more about technical test soon because w- once we get that we know we're getting close to like a pre-order announcement right so we're yeah we're getting there <laughs> i'm ready one step at a time so-